So Beijing has so many great things that it's known for. The Forbidden City, the Great Wall, the Olympics from 2008, the upcoming Olympics in 2022, Beijing Duck. But there's also one very negative thing Beijing is well known for, air pollution. So there's sandstorms in spring, there's all kinds of pollen in summer, fall is pretty chill, and then when winter hits, all the burning coal just blankets the city in air pollution. In addition to that, with so many people living in Beijing, year round traffic is just contributing so much more air pollution, to the point where the government has regulations on which day people can drive. The Air Quality Index, or AQI, is what we use to measure the quality of air. Both the US and China use the same index, however their interpretation of what good and bad is is slightly different. The US is a little more cautious as 56 micrograms of pollution per cubic meter of air is considered unhealthy versus China at 116 micrograms. That's more than double. So when you're walking around in Beijing, if you see air pollution, that means the AQI is probably high. But if you don't see air pollution, the AQI still could be high. So that's why it's really important to download an app or to monitor the AQI website. Wherever you get your AQI information from, it's really important to follow it because just eyeballing it doesn't always work. China's Ministry of Environmental Protection, the US Embassy, and a few other organizations constantly monitor the air quality in the city. They have points all over the city where they can take different measurements and they give updates every hour. For people like me, the nearest measurement point is about five kilometers from my house. So I don't know if the measurement's exactly right for my specific area, but I get a general idea. Before moving to China, I lived in Spain, Belgium, and the US. And in those countries, I never even thought to look at the air quality. I didn't even know that was a thing. But now, living here, I've gone back and checked just to see you know, what the air quality is in these other places. And normally, they're much better than China. Sometimes those other cities can get up to moderate, but they never really get past that level. China pretty much lives at moderate, and then when winter comes around, we're in unhealthy hazardous all the time. Look at that air pollution, it's crazy. You can see it in the sky. It's just, it's so thick. And people out here without masks on, some of them are smart and have it. I don't. I don't know what these people are thinking. It's crazy. So technically, no, you don't have to wear a mask. There's no rule, no law saying that people have to wear masks. Most foreigners will wear a mask once the AQI hits the unhealthy level. Chinese people, on the other hand, don't usually wear masks. If you see about 15% of the people wearing masks, you know the air quality is terrible. I mean, horrible. Very few people seem to wear masks. They don't... Um, it's, they're not bothered by it. A lot of them use this thing, I'm used to it, which is quite interesting. It's like if you're driving a car in a demolition derby and you're crashing into the other cars. Inside the car, it looks fine. You're like, yeah, I'm good, I'm good, but the outside is tore up. So I'm imagining this is how Chinese people's bodies are on the inside. They can't see it, so they're, they don't realize how destroyed it really is. But that's just my professional medical opinion. Me personally, in summer, I don't usually have to wear a mask. Spring and fall, I wear it a few times once it hits a certain number. And in winter, I pretty much have a mask on every day. My limit is 150, which is the US AQI's level for unhealthy. So anything 150 and higher, I have a mask on. I also like to wear a mask whenever I'm biking because I bike with the traffic. So because of emissions, I just wanna make sure that I'm, my lungs are protected. I'm also a professional fitness trainer and I do free workouts in the park. And I did it in Spain, in the US, and now I'm doing it here in China. And so far we've only had to cancel one workout due to air quality. For that, I set the limit at about 250. As I mentioned before, they update the air quality every hour and it seems to change quite dramatically. It can go from 250 to 70 in one hour. So 250 or less, we'll go out there and work out still. And we just hope our masks are doing their jobs. One interesting thing you'll see are people with the surgical masks. Uh, these do absolutely nothing to protect you from air pollution. Uh, and so I've asked some people, like, why would you even wear them if you know they're not good for air pollution? 
And it seems to be there's two main reasons why Chinese people wear these surgical masks. Uh, one is because if they have a cold or if they're sick, this prevents spreading of germs. So they're just being considerate. And of course in winter when the air pollution is bad, this is when more people tend to be sick. So you will see people wearing the surgical masks, not as a air pollution prevention, but more of a spreading disease prevention. So well, I guess it's not a bad thing. The other reason may surprise you because it surprised me, uh, especially women, a lot of them will wear the surgical masks, not because they're sick, not because of the air pollution, but because they didn't put makeup on or they haven't put makeup on yet and they're going out in public and they don't want to be seen uh, without makeup. So uh, I'm not sure of the validity of this for everyone, but several different Chinese women have confirmed this. So as I mentioned before, surgical masks don't work, so I haven't bought any of those. I don't own any. I did get this uh, pretty interesting mask. Uh, it's kind of like a more of a style mask. It came with some feet warmers that I bought, so I guess it's supposed to match the feet warmers? I don't, I don't know. I just came with that. I, I do use three different types of masks. I use the standard 3M disposable paper masks. These are the really popular ones that you can buy at 7-Eleven or any convenience store. I buy the 95% one because it blocks out 95% of the, the bad stuff, uh, at least I hope. So these disposable ones, these are really good. I use these when I travel. They say that uh, you can get about 10 uses out of them. Um, I just wear, I don't even wear them that often. So uh, if I travel with it, you know, you kind of look at it. If it starts turning black, you probably should change it. If you've had it for maybe a, more than a few weeks, you probably should change it. They're not that expensive. Go buy some new ones. They come in packs of three. And if you are planning to buy a lot, you can probably buy like a 20 pack or something. At the recommendation of some Chinese friends, I bought a plastic mask. This one has actually a fan in it. Uh, this is the filter goes here, and then inside there's a fan, and it's battery powered, like a. You can hear it. Can you hear that? Yeah, so this goes here. This is awesome in the summer because wearing a mask makes you hot. All your hot breath coming out doesn't go anywhere, so it just sits there in your face and makes you sweat. So in summer, this fan is going, is blowing in cool air, and it's, it's perfect for summertime. Um, this plastic rubber seal is really good, uh, except for again, in summer when you're sweating, it starts to slide a little bit. So, you know, uh, it's better than nothing, right? They say the filter on this one lasts about 30 hours or change it every month. So I've only changed it a few times. I, I don't use it that often now that it's winter. These straps are kind of irritating though. They're good because there's two, so they help stay on your head, you know. One, one's supposed to go high, one's supposed to go low. I make them both go high because I think the shape of my face versus whoever this was intended to be designed for uh, is a little bit different, so I need it holding up like at an angle, or maybe my head is just weird shape, I don't know. But um, these straps are pretty cool and they're like gummy, so they're really convenient. They're just hard to use when I have gloves on. So take your gloves off, put your mask on, put your gloves back on. Problem solved. That was easy. Came with this really nice carrying case. Uh, this is like the same kind that you use to like wipe your iPhone or uh, computer or whatever, your Samsung tablet, doesn't matter. It's that mesh material, so it's really soft and it has a drawstring, so your big mask doesn't fall out. And the last, my favorite mask, the one I wear the most, is this one. It's a Synchro Respro mask that I bought. Uh, it's a brand from the UK. Uh, they're not paying me for this, but it's a good mask. I like it because it has the adjustable strap here, or the, the bridge. Um, it has two air filters, so this is the mask that I work out with. I also use this mask to bike uh, because it came with the HEPA filter, so this is good for blocking car emissions in addition to the PM particles, 2.5 particles. Uh, I like these two valves. Then it's this neoprene, so this is amazing in winter because it keeps my whole head warm. Uh, this covers my, my whole head, people say I look like a ninja with this mask on, um, but I really like it. It's a, it's a good purchase. I don't even remember how much it was, but I think it was worth it, whatever, whatever I paid for it. Respro says that you should change the filter on this one every 69 hours or once a month. 
so I don't actually calculate how many hours I'm wearing this so I just do it monthly but I think I probably wear it now that I'm thinking about it more than 69 hours when you're in China there's lots of different masks you can buy to protect yourself from pollution these surgical masks are kind of tricky they don't really protect anything um, you have to be careful when you're buying a mask you want to look for something like this it has PM 2.5 that's what's protecting you these masks are good, any of these masks are good. And this mask just for your face, make it look pretty. So if you've read my blog from before, you know that I was living in Europe and one thing I always lamented was the cigarette smoke. And coming to China was no breath of fresh air. But the air pollution doesn't bother me in the way cigarette smoke does. If I don't have my mask on, I can't smell the air pollution. It doesn't physically, there's no smell that bothers me. I can see it, so it's psychological, but the smell is fine. There's no, I don't smell anything. But air pollution does affect smokers and their behaviors, which in turn affects me. So here in China, one very interesting thing you'll see, the 17 Chinese people that you'll see all day that actually have a mask on, Four of them probably have the mask around their neck and they're smoking a cigarette. The cigarette's probably worse than the pollution. Okay, I don't know. And it's like a legit mask, like this. Not even the surgical mask, like, you know, they're, they didn't do their makeup zone. No, they have a real block the pollution mask, like this, hang around their neck and they're smoking a cigarette. And then I have not stayed long enough to watch, but I'm sure they do this afterward. You can just stick the cigarette inside and just be done with it, right? Second behavior that you'll notice, of course, the pollution here is worse in winter, and in winter it's also cold. So smokers don't want to go outside and smoke. They want to stay inside and smoke. And so in any office building, malls, or anything like this, public areas, you will, if you go into any bathroom, or if you go into any stairwell, there will be cigarette butts all over the place. The smell of smoke just super strong because the smokers don't want to go outside. So for me, this means I have air pollution outside and air pollution inside. So in winter, I just wear a mask all day, every day, sleep with it 24 hours, just, yeah, I'm definitely wearing my mask way more than 69 hours. So this is the air quality in Beijing in a nutshell from my perspective. For me, it's just part of the culture. The air pollution comes with it. It's just something I have to go through in order to be here, to immerse myself in the culture, to learn the language. Uh, I think it's a not a bad trade-off. One interesting thing to note is that uh, many of the locals or people who have lived in Beijing for a long time swear that the air pollution is way better now than it was three, four, five years ago. So I'm just glad I didn't live here back then. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, comment, subscribe all those other social media words that people say at the end of their videos. And I thank you for traveling with the T-Max.